right, welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. Hi, y'all. So uh, let's just get this out of the way to start with. So I was going to uh, trim up the old mustache and goatee area here, and I clipped the wrong guide back on. And after you make the first pass right down the middle with the short one, you just got to blend it all in and just let it grow back out. Luckily, it doesn't take long to grow back out, but these things happen. What can you say? I've made a, been half asleep and made a bad pass and had to shave the whole thing off and let it grow back before. And every once in a while you just shave it off, let it grow back, it gets it all shaped back up right. But anyway, this time was just pure accidental. Put the wrong, put the wrong guide back on. So to solve that problem, I got two guides out here now. So when it does get longer, I do like it a little shorter around the mustache and under the lip than I do on the chin. So now I've got the two guys out here and I put the rest of them up so they shouldn't have that problem again. All right, so it's a Saturday afternoon. Uh, I got off at 11 last night, didn't have to stay over. Almost had to stay over, but I didn't have to stay over. And I could have stayed over, but you know, other people need overtime hours too. There's no need to hog the hours. So anyway, uh, I came home and I got some sleep. Well, what that's causing now is I gotta be at work at seven tonight, but since I slept some last night, can't really sleep today. So it's I don't know, one thirty or so in the afternoon. And uh, I'll get another hour or two before it's all over with. But uh, anyway, so I was out running around this morning and uh, ran by the, the local Albertsons just to see if the off chance is maybe they had some Williams left. None of the stores around here have Williams left. I know there's a, a, an old country store uh, between here and yonder and I may drive out there next week and see if they happen to have a few cakes left It doesn't matter. I've got plenty really uh, you know I've got bunches of the uh, of the new stuff and I've got you know what 10 Or more of the old stuff and then I've got if I run out of that I got Colgate Vintage Colgate. I got vintage burn. I got plenty of stuff. It's not like I'm gonna run out of stuff to shave with but anyway if I could find another couple of cakes, I would pick them up and keep them to give away and that kind of stuff. But anyway, while I was there, uh, Cremo. I haven't tried Cremo. And I know a lot of people like it. Uh, I've seen some people using it. It's supposed to, it's a brushless cream, but it's supposed to lather what I've been told. So we're going to see. Now, one thing when you're reading on this thing here, um, I was reading about it, and of course, it's uh, a woodsy masculine scent of exotic sandalwood and a timeless classic. And I like sandalwood. I, it's not my favorite. Rose is my favorite, but sandalwood is definitely up the list. But they talk about, uh, I saw it somewhere on here. Let me, uh, Now it does make the point that uh, it's concentrated to get your skin, not in a cloud that gets scraped down the drain. So they're saying, you know, don't put on buttercream. You just need a thin one. That's really good. Um, gives a close, comfortable shave. Leave skin smooth. That's nice. That's interesting because I thought it said somewhere on here. It says that most can uh, shave against the uh, against the grain for closer, longer lasting shave. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, oh well, I don't see what I thought I saw. But anyway, it's still. Uh, so we're gonna see how that works out for us. We're gonna try that. All right, said so it's a ninety day supply. Of course, you know the way we use stuff. So uh, we're going to finish it up with Master's Bay Rum. That's in my little uh, light bulb glass there. And I asked her a question. I saw the other day, someone on Toast, you know, that's the original Safety 3, T-O-S-T, the number 3.com, where we do single edge and, uh, and inject their shave. And someone was talking about they were, they were using the Master's Spice. And I'm going to see what they say about it. I asked them, so I'm going to see what they say about it. Well, they'll get their old face wiped down. So I was reading again somewhere. There was a product someone was trying to sell. One of the, I don't even remember what the brand name was. But anyway, when they try to sell you, I don't, 
I don't really think someone is trying to sell me something. I want to try to figure the science of stuff out. But they were talking about to use the warm water to open the pores and the cold water to close the pores and all that stuff. And I just don't think pores open and close. There's no mechanism in the skin. I could see the warm skin is, is warmer and it's, it's, it's softer and stuff like that. And when you put the cold water on the skin tight, I can see that. But it's not because the pores are opening and closing, I don't think. Maybe that's where I thought I read that was on the Cremo, but it's not. It was somewhere else I was reading that. But uh, as far as prep goes, I was reading some more articles because I do that. And, uh, the, you know, hairs will absorb water. I'll, I'll go for that. And it probably makes them softer. But uh, I'm not always sure that it's such a big deal. I used to be really big on the prep train. I'm not anymore. And uh, it seems like that a, I don't know. A good wipe, wipe down seems to do good. If you're one of the ones that go through the whole barber thing and soak it warm it on the face and stuff like that, because that's what the barbers do. Remember, the barbers are selling you a service. So they're going to do that. Back in the wild woolly days, they probably didn't wash your face a whole lot. So when you went in for your shave in the barber chair, they had the hot towel and everything. It was probably as much cleaning as doing anything. Uh, just a guess. Uh, for a razor today, I broke out the G8. Uh, I love the G's, the Schick G's, E's and G's, the older models. I love those. Put a new blade. This is the Chinese Schick uh, blade that I put in here. The G8 is really neat. Uh, you know, the G's normally have a more of a uh, slick handle than a G8. They put the ribs on it. You can hold on to it really nice. This particular one is one of the more aggressive razors I have. This one is just almost, if not at least as much aggressive as the E2 that I always talk about, that I have an early model E2 that you can actually open for cleaning. Now, if you don't have a G2 that's made to open for cleaning, if you have these chicks that are pegged to where they're not supposed to open, don't do it. You can get away with it, but you're gonna loosen the spring up eventually, and it's not made to do that. You can force a lot of things into working, but you know, just cause you can don't mean you should, and it doesn't mean it's gonna do good. So for a bush today, I was digging around looking for some stuff and I ran across this old vintage. This is a uh, made right. It doesn't have a number on it. It's a sterilized pure badger. And uh, it's still got the vintage knot in it. The knot, of course, you know, it doesn't look like a whole lot anymore. I've been meaning to clean that one up. I thought it was a really neat looking handle. That's why I bought it when I saw the pictures. I figure I can uh, polish it up, get some... Uh, you know, some frits or something like that. I see people talking about, and I've seen they polish up old handles and they really, I think maybe that'll work on that one one day. But uh, we'll see one day. You know how that works when I get around to it? And you never seem to get around to it. All right, Sandalwood Cremo. And if I'm not mistaken, and I'm pretty sure I'm not, this is the first time I've used Cremo. Uh, it's a readily available product that you can buy local. I tell you, the first thing I notice is it does have a very nice, clean uh, sandalwood scent. And I do like that in a soap. Uh, I don't think I'd like it in a, particularly in a, um, you know, an aftershave or anything like that. As far as a soap, I've even had uh, bar soaps, bath soaps that were sandalwood. And uh, they're, they're not bad, they're nice. I, I, I like sandalwood for that kind of stuff. All right, so let's see if we can get it to lie there. Oh yeah, I think it's going to be, oh yeah, look at that. It's going to ladder just fine. Well, one good thing about the screw up with the goatee is that I get to go back and make sure it's all shaped up nice. You remember here a while back, I had actually taken it off for a while just so I could uh, get it straightened up. Just do something different every once in a while is not a bad thing. And this was, uh, this was on sale, uh, how much was it? Down around seven bucks, something like that. It's a pretty good size tube. I mean, it's a uh, six uh, six fluid ounces, 177 milliliters. So it's a nice size tube. Lasts a while. Well, yeah, that's pretty nice. Another uh, another brushless cream that lathers really well with a brush that I can get local is the Kiss My Face. The Whole Food, the, the you know, those kind of stores. Uh, we got a Whole Foods over here. We got a place called Sprouts and uh, they sell that kind of stuff. But the last time I was in Sprouts, they had Kiss My Face all over the place. They had several different of them. And it's also a really nice, uh, 
cream brushes cream that lathers really well. It feels good on the skin and all that kind of good stuff. So there we go. Lathered up pretty good. The old brush still still works great. I mean, it's not the prettiest knot anymore, but it still works really well. It doesn't have a lot of backbone, but that's okay. I've got several brushes that don't have a lot of backbone that work pretty good. Well, anyway, see what we get. Everything, ooh, yeah, it slides and ice. Got a new blade in the G. I can feel the blade. But like I said, this is one of my more aggressive. Now, when I say aggressive, to me, I'm talking about blade feel. I can feel the blade. There's nothing mild about this. It doesn't particularly feel like it's going to bite me at any moment. But, uh, you know, if you didn't have good technique, maybe it would. That's what kills me about these overly aggressive razors. Uh, certain of the newfangled thingies, these two-sided newfangled thingies, they're made to be really, a lot of blade feel aggressive and people talk about what monsters they were. Well, that's what I used to think about. The Micromatic, that it was a monster. And the thing about the Micromatic or any of those really aggressive feeling razors, they can be monsters. You know, their technique is off. They're going to show you. So I'm just kind of eyeballing, going around and straightening the old goatee up here. Very slick. Uh, the cream over here is a very slick lather. Everything's great. Cutting good. New blade is always good. I don't know how old the blade was on this razor. It probably would have shaved just fine, but I've got some new blades. So, you know, why not? All right. So that was a couple of days worth of growth just the way things have been going and it's cleaned up really nice just on one pass i'm gonna go ahead and while i'm over here i'm gonna straighten up the edge of this goatee while i can see it real good i guess maybe that's one advantage to the uh oopsie here was that i get to make sure it's all shaped up good so there we go nothing wrong with that now they say in the instructions that you can just go back and put more water on and and you'll have plenty of slickness and i'm sure that's true but you know that's what we do another pass for relathering do another pass creature of habit i'm going to use my my routine all right plenty of lather there for a second pass Plenty of up. and we'll run down through here and get the second pass on. Nice little across the drain. Yes, indeed. So the G8 is nice. It really is. Of course, all the Gs. I, I love the Gs. Um, any of the six really shave really well, but the G's, the E's are my favorite, and then the G's, and I don't know. Somewhere along the line there, I jump out because uh, the N's, not that big a fan of an N, not that big a fan of a J. I've never used an O or the clone of an O, so I don't know anything about those, but, uh, and then the H1 and the H2 I'm a fan of. Those are the, the, the little ones that were marketed more towards the ladies, and, uh, Coffee's okay today. I got some of the when I got when I got that uh, Mercury, the last one I got, it had some of the uh, the little pods where you put the, the ground coffee in them so that you don't have to spend all the money on the pods. And apparently, I'm not getting the mix right yet. Maybe I'm using the wrong ground coffee because the Cafe de Mall I have is a fairly coarse grind. And uh, anyway, it's not bad coffee, but it's not particularly good coffee either. It's drinkable. It'll get the job done. It's not horrible. But it'll do. Maybe as I go, I'll get it all fixed out. All right. With two passes with the Cremo, I can say, yeah, I have no problem with the Cremo at all. Matter of fact, I can still feel sickness there, just like it says in the instructions that you just add more water and away it goes. Is it particularly better than anything else in my book? No. It's a shave cream. And it does okay. Now, like I said, the neat thing about it, though, is it, it does work with a brush, which is nice. And I can get it local. 
and I don't have to go to Walmart. Oh, Walmart's beating me down though. The way prices are these days, it's harder, harder, and harder to stay away from the Walmart. So far, I'm doing a pretty good job of it. But uh, it is definitely not easy staying away from Walmart these days. And the local Sam's has the best gas prices. But uh, anyway, no such thing as best gas prices these days. Just saying. Just saying. But, you know, got to drive and go to work and got to do this and got to do that. Definitely not planning any cross-country vacations. All right, got our witch hazel cleanup going here. Could I go against the grain with uh, Cremo? Sure, I can go against the grain with a lot of stuff. Am I going to? No. I know there's people that say it's worth it to them because they don't get sandpaper feeling as soon. But uh, and to them, it's worth doing against the grain. And that's, that's great. Knock it out. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be back sandpaper in a couple of hours. Even if I get it smooth, smooth, smooth. You know, it's not really, not really worth it to me. Plus, I don't really mind the sandpaper. I really don't. But anyway, that brush one of these days is going to look a whole lot better than it does now. But it works really good the way it is now. I can't complain. And the goatee will grow back out. Last time I saw my pop. He had his, uh, he had a goatee cut down really low like this. So maybe as I get older, that's what I'll do too. But, uh, not yet. I still want it fuller than that right now. All right, gonna splash on a little of the Masters Bay Rum. Masters Bay Rum is interesting and I'll tell you why. Uh, when I was, had moved back home, I started going back to the barber shop. I got my first haircut in. in Greenville, Mississippi. It was called The Palace. I don't even know if it's still open or not. But uh, they had a couple of different aftershaves in there. And, and the Masters Bay Rum was uh, one that they had. I don't even remember what else was there. But I, I, I remember buying the Bay Rum. And uh, I really liked it then and I really like it now. And my brother uh, for my birthday here a couple of years ago, I guess it was now, had found some at his barber. I've been talking about it and he brought me a bottle of it. So I still got some of that left. But it's a really nice bay rum. It's a different bay rum from like the uh, Penault Virgin Island bay rum. It's not as in your face, not as forward. It's a more, uh, I would call it smoother, uh, sophisticated maybe. You want to use that word. I try not to use it much. But anyway, it's definitely a good aftershave. And I'm going to try some of their others one of these days. Well, there we go. That's what we got today. And uh, I'm going to try to relax and try to get another nap before I have to get up and start getting ready for work. Going to work my 12 hours tonight and hopefully everything will be nice and smooth and I can get off in the morning and come home and do it again. There you go. All right, well, you know, if you uh, if you like these single edge razors, the injector razors and the single edge and all that stuff, come over and see us at Toast. That's T-O-S-T-3, the number three, dot com. Nice little form over there. It's a small place. It's not like the shaved in. It's not like a uh, dang fine shave. It's not like the shaving room that are bigger and they got all the activity. It's a small place. All we do, all we do is single edge and injectors, single edge safety razors. I realize that straight razors are single edge. I got you. I, I, I do, but single edge straight razors and the uh, injectors and then the newfangled things that use those. And hey, we even go for the shade razors, which are the single half of a DE, the one you break a double-edged blade into and put them in. Uh, you know, there's some people building 3D, um, 3D printed razors that do that. And then uh, they're taking some of the two-sided thingies and they're actually grinding a side off of it and turn it into a shade razor. We're okay with those. Uh, we've got some people that have those and, and post on those and that's great. But as far as actual double-sided thingies and straight razors, those are unmentionables. And we're not going to do that there. But all right, so y'all have a great day. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy shaves to you.